How's it going guys? Welcome back to Tom Mods Things. Uh, as you can see we're sat in the uh, Project Saxo today and this is what we are going to be working on in this episode. Uh, we are going through a lot of bits that we've uh, purchased for this car. You'll see one of them behind me but we'll get onto that in a sec. Uh, we're going to be making some more progress on the audio side of things. We've got new brakes to go on this ready for its uh, MOT which Fingers crossed it's going to pass pretty well, but uh, yeah, we're going to crack on and we're going to get all those little niggly bits sorted. Uh, we've also gone and picked up a couple more bits and bobs for the sort of interior of this car and uh, we've uh, started to kind of go through and, and repaint and, and tidy up a lot of the like the parts, the trim bits and stuff that were all that sort of grey sort of Mark 1 base colour, which are just minging and horrible. So we've been gradually kind of going through all of that, including vents and various bits and bobs. Anyway crack on and show you one of the things that I've been itching to do since I purchased this car because it's just been bugging me and uh, we finally saw it out so let's crack on let's show you what we've got let's get into it right guys next on the uh, list of things to do is to get rid of this ugly thing uh, that's sitting on the back here so uh, 106 doesn't have this because actually this is a uh, button to release the uh, rear boot lid we don't need to do that on this because we actually already have a button rigged up on the inside even though it's obviously got the smooth tailgate so there's no handle or button or anything that's usually on the uh, uh, original sort of saxos but uh, we can't be having this uh, this is definitely not gonna stay here it's ugly it's horrible and we don't need to risk windscreen wiper so we are going to remove it so the way to do that uh, is basically under here there's a bolt uh, I don't know what size it's going to be we're gonna have to do a bit of guessing in a sec but we basically remove this then on the inside we take away the trim that sits underneath Let's see if we can get this open with one hand so underneath here I've got the uh, trim pieces so we need to remove this uh, black piece as you see it here and under there is then a couple of bolts for the uh, sort of uh, rear window wiper motor so what we're going to do is we're going to crack on we're going to get this removed this pulled off and then um, I'll catch you when we've got the panel off the inside right so trim removed uh, sitting down here there's basically three bolts there's uh, one in the middle just where the handle is one this side one over the other side and the whole thing pulls off it's kind of clipped in with these white clips in a few places and what that does is that exposes uh, this which is the uh, rear uh, windscreen wiper uh, motor so basically what we need to do is we need to unmount this um, and effectively pull the whole unit through um, the uh, sort of the inside of the uh, the car uh, and then on the outside as you can see we've just got the little nub sticking out at the moment because we've taken the wiper off uh, that does take a little bit of wiggling usually because they tend to be a bit seized on and stuff being exposed to the elements um, so yeah we're going to crack on there's sort of one bolt here from the looks of it another one up here another one down here um, and then I think we're probably in a position then to take the whole thing out. Uh, don't forget to obviously unplug it. There's a plug just up here. You can just about see it uh, with the uh, with the sort of brownish uh, plug on there. So yeah, we're going to crack on. We'll undo these bolts. We'll take all this out, and then I'll show you what we're left with. Right, and there we go, guys. So uh, rear windscreen wiper uh, removed. We're still left with this hole at the moment. So what we've gone and done is we have ordered ourselves a. A new glass bung to kind of go in here so that will kind of give it more of a sort of seamless effect rather than just sort of sticking a rubber grommet in. Uh, we're just going to sort of take a, a scalpel or something and just try and get rid of some of this gunk that's kind of formed on the glass around here so that shouldn't be there and it'll be nice and smooth. So that's great, so that's one job done and sorted. Right guys, wapow, there we go. So uh, we've got our little acrylic bung. I need to do a little bit of work just to take some of this sort of uh, uh, stuff that's kind of like etched its way on which is where the original kind of bung and everything sat but I think you can say and you can agree that that looks way better than having that stupid uh, rear windscreen wiper across the back so yep smashed it with that which is cool so crack on to the next bit right and then on to the next thing that's turned up so uh, as you can see very dusty packaging these have been in storage for a while uh, but uh, one of our good friends on uh, Facebook who has uh, supplied us with various things over the uh, the years for the 106 Andals of the Saxo project uh, found these in his storage and what these are are effectively uh, LED light up um, sill plates so these will in essence sit kind of down here uh, decide kind of where we put them either on the top or up here and uh, in essence what they end up looking like is uh, when you turn them on this whole center section lights up and glows uh, these are blue we need to check what the other ones are uh, underneath uh, to make sure that they are the same um, 
uh, color and these are going to be going in both the saxo and the 106 so we need to basically work out where we're going to run these wires because we're going to have to start drilling some holes because at the moment this is all um there's no holes around here really for those to go in so we're gonna have to sort that out um but that shouldn't be too difficult and then uh, yeah basically we just need to decide where we want to stick them as well so the next bit just kind of happened. So um, I have gone and picked up some new parts for the Saxo, uh, probably ahead of uh, some of the other bits that have got sorted out, but we have a few bits that are turning up. We've got some new discs and, uh, and pads and stuff turning up so we can get that sorted. And then I'm pretty much sort of fairly confident that at that point we can actually get it booked in for an MOT, which is, fingers crossed, gonna be mega. Um, so that's gonna be pretty cool because if we can get it to pass an MOT, then we can actually start driving this around, which is gonna be sick. Um, but yeah, what we've done instead is we've uh, uh, picked up another chrome thing. So what I'll do is I'll flip you around and we'll show you what we've got. Ta-da! Right, and there we have it. So, uh, those of you that followed along with 106 will know that we've got one of these for that as well. But this is uh, effectively a show cage for a Saxo 106 Corsa B. They're all kind of the same brackets and stuff. Uh, difference between this one and the one in the 106 is this one is way nicer, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's got probably a little bit of polish that needs to happen uh, just to kind of get it really to shine. But, I mean, this one over what the 106 one is is uh, crazy in comparison, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, so we've got this and we're going to crack on and get this in here because, yeah, I mean, it's got no interior and stuff, but definitely needs the cage in there, doesn't it? So, yeah, uh, basically it comes in a few bits. So you get your side bits, you get your connector joint pieces, which is the other one up there. Um, and then you have a bar sort of pole thing that runs all the way through the middle, mounts in at the uh which is this uh, where the seat belt comes in and then it's also which these always get lost but it has the original proper lower mountings as well so uh, we've got the full kit here so we're going to crack on we're going to just mock this up really i think at the moment because we've got nothing else in there so we'll just chuck it in uh, see what it looks like through the window because that's really what you want you want the chrome coming through the window with our little chrome pins that we've added in as well on this and also the 106 uh so yeah so cracking on with that which is cool so yes let's uh let's bash that in there and see what it looks like right a couple of bolts loosely fitted in but yeah uh, perfect mounting up to all the uh, mount points that it needs to everything in place uh, same up here and then this is kind of what we were aiming for through the back window all this chromey goodness uh, just coming in through here so yeah I reckon uh, this is definitely was definitely a good uh, good thing to get hold of we needed something for this to match up with all the other sort of chrome and silver pieces we had and these sort of things just absolutely set cars off when uh, when you get them installed in that uh so yeah coming onto the inside looking pretty good uh we still need to find new seats that's kind of our next big thing at the moment which is our sticking point this is just kind of loosely in here but these aren't going to work with uh what we have uh with those door cards over there so yeah still got quite a lot of sanding and stuff to do on those to get them finished up um but uh yeah so we need to get some smaller seats because these are slightly too wide at the bottom these are 530 uh millimeters from here over to here and we need something that's either going to be 500 or less so i found some seats that are around 450 so they're quite a bit smaller in the middle and they'll kind of fit perfectly uh, but they're a little bit expensive so we're seeing if we can find something um that's going to be a little bit more suitable and a little bit more budget friendly uh for this uh, but yeah once the seat goes in once the wheels and everything and the brakes will go on then we should be in a position as i say to get this mot because we sorted all the engine gremlins and stuff on the last video was it on the last video can't remember now actually whether it was the last video i'll have to look back but yeah in one of the videos or maybe not the videos maybe it was on instagram uh but effectively we put a post up to uh say about uh, the issues that we're having with the saxo project and then one of you lovely people on instagram came back and said have you tried this thing uh for one of the issues and uh that lo and behold fixed that issue completely but then subsequently also fixed all the unrelated issues that we're having with all the other bits as well so that was epic so it means that we're now back to uh, where we were which is that everything's running and driving and braking and stuff as we should do and now we're just sort of tidying up all the little bits that we needed to do uh, that we didn't manage to do last time so that we can get a ticket on this and then we can drive it around um, and then it's full audio which is what we're on to at the moment so uh, as you can see behind that one over there 
been picking up various bits of audio barn gear as we've been going because that is what we are going to be putting in the back of this so we're going to be having those in the um, front door speakers and then also we'll be having that all through the rear of the car as well so uh, we're still on the lookout for some of that stuff um, and also trying to work out what we're going to do in the back with where all the subs are going to get positioned got far too many ideas really with that so uh, need to kind of home it in and make a decision on what we're going to make it look like Oh guys, a couple of days on, I had a couple more packages turn up. All right, first set is actually the first mod that I ever did to a car. Wow, check out those bad boys. Oh yeah, the pinnacle of Halford's engineering. Uh, so these chrome, uh, like 10 HP plus um, pedals are going in. Yep, this bad boy because it has got basic basic pedals and yeah these guys are going to definitely set that off so uh we're gonna take these out we're gonna screw some holes we're gonna chuck them in and then we're instantly gonna be able to go faster so those in the car we come down here so we've got some bolts so these bolts are to basically sort out the ones that i have thrown away slash used on something else um, which basically need to go in the lower gearbox, lower rear gearbox mount that's uh, down the bottom here uh, because all the bolts that I've got are not the right size. Then underneath that is this thing. So if we just do a bit of a spin, uh, that is going to give it away. So in this box are basically some new brakes, uh, new discs, should I say, to replace these old crusty ones that we've got here because uh, these are just minging and uh, even though they're sort of reasonably okay and we could probably resurface them we just thought you know what let's just stick in some new ones let's get them all drilled and grooved so they all look nice and race car um, and then we can do the same on the front as well now these are actually already dimpled flip lines and stuff but anyway they just look horrible so laying it down need to replace them put some new ones in we'll keep the green green stuff pads in um, but yeah gonna crack on and get those changed And there we go guys uh, all back together in all its glory looking way better than it did before uh, so we just finished this side what we're going to do is we're going to bosh through doing the fronts and do the rear as well and uh, then we'll have all new discs right guys so now that's done uh, I can show you where we're up to with these door cards as you can see there uh, looking pretty good kind of getting there um, taking obviously loads of time at the moment this is kind of where I'm spending the majority of the time but I'm just running out of motivation for it at the moment which is why they're taking a bit longer um, as you can see we kind of have some areas around here where we need to tidy it up and here and here um, and then we also need to work out what we're kind of doing with the center as well because um, the material that we've got which is this stuff over here um, is really quite thick so uh, this one's obviously bonded to this um, at the moment I've kind of trimmed around to kind of give it a reasonable edge but where this material is so much thicker than the um, previous one um, we're going to struggle to get this kind of bonded to the inside of this especially because um, where we had to kind of cut off the heat stakes as you can see here um, we haven't actually kind of got anywhere for these to kind of bond into at the moment so we kind of need to work out what we're going to do with that not entirely sure yet but um, hopefully we can come up with some sort of um sort of retention method to kind of keep this attached to this um if not we're gonna have to kind of rethink everything that we've got here and work out a different route but separately is a thing that we're going to move on to now uh over here uh, we are working on the 106 i've already made a start on this but um we have had the 
audio barn speakers in the back for ages now, the subs, um, but they haven't actually been wired in. Um, we haven't actually got round to it yet. So uh, we've got uh, this temporary amp at the moment, um, which we're just going to use for testing. Um, and then we have run already all the cables kind of under the carpet to make it nice and tidy. Um, got them kind of coming out here at the moment just for testing purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to rig up one of these subs um, into this amp. We need to work out what head unit we put in here because uh, the flip out one that we have had an issue with the outputs, which you saw on the last video, because we had some issues with this speaker and this speaker um, with some sort of interference and crackliness um, which I believe is just down to that head unit because the outputs on it were all just a little bit weird um, so they weren't weren't working properly so we had to kind of flick them kind of in between um, sort of front and rear to actually get anything out of them so uh, what we are going to do is we're going to try and rig up one of the other head units that we've got we've got the old Kenwood out of the Saxo that we're not going to use anyway so we may as well just cut and splice and put the wires in just to kind of check it um, and the rip speed one, the one that we were going to be putting in the Saxo, that's also got an issue um, in that it's now not reading CDs, which is really annoying. So uh, we haven't actually got a way of using that to test it either. So um, we're kind of a little bit stuck really. So uh, we've got a replacement, I think, for the flip out. We've got my actual original head unit that I had in my first car, which was also a rip speed, but not a flip out one, but it still has like a tiny little like five inch monitor in the front of it. So you can still watch DVDs, completely pointless, but we're gonna, I think, take that one out and we might actually put that in the 106 to begin with um, and then uh, use it as kind of a temporary measure until we work out what we're going to do head unit wise moving forwards so I'm going to crack on get a head unit in this and hopefully with any luck we'll have this amp turn on and we'll have some bass coming out of the uh, rear speakers fingers crossed all right guys made a little bit of progress so we're just wiring in one sub at the moment just on one of the voice calls and uh, we just sort of rigged everything up because um, we were just sort of testing turns out the remote cable on this spare head unit's not working um it seems like everything that i've got at the moment isn't working properly so anyway what we've done is we've just jacked it into a live feed that comes in on ignition uh, but what we do have now is some bass coming out of this bad boy now which is awesome, so. Uh... Can't turn it up too loud because we've got little one uh, upstairs at the moment. So what I'm going to do is uh, obviously we're not going to be driving around like this at the moment. So uh, we're going to get this temporary amp mounted up in the centre over here. Um, we have lined up hopefully one of the Audio Barn Chrome uh, Flame um amplifiers but we just need to work out some time to go over and pick it up um so what we're going to do is we're going to chuck this one up there for the moment uh we'll get all the wiring sorted i think we'll wire it into both and we'll just see how long we can run this amplifier before it goes pop um and uh get everything tidied up we'll put this head unit in for the moment into here uh so we'll get all the cabling and stuff sorted out on the back of this uh, and we'll just use this as a sort of temporary measure until the other one turns up um and then we'll get all these wires and the seat and everything back in so uh what i'll do is i'll crack on and i'll catch you guys as soon as that's complete Right, so here we go guys. Uh, we are all wired up. I'm sat currently in the passenger seat. Uh, as you can see, we've got a green light going on in the back there. So uh, we have basically... And uh, that's kind of the new temporary head unit at the moment. Still got a bit to kind of fit on the uh, sort of surround and stuff, but uh, it doesn't look too bad to be honest. Silver and stuff kind of matches everything else that's going on in here. So I quite like the aesthetic, um, but it doesn't have a screen. So that's going to be the main problem with us at the moment. However, what we do have is if we just press play on this, so, <laughs> so as you can tell, we now have uh, some subwoofers. So uh, yeah, basically we've wired them both up. Uh, I don't know how long that little uh, juice amp is gonna uh, be able to cope with it, but uh, yeah, we have bass in this car and the speakers are working properly as well, which they weren't doing with our other head unit, as you saw in the last episode. So. Uh, feeling pretty good now to be honest because it means that we can now cruise around town and back out those tunes and uh, effectively be a bit of a nuisance with some bass hammering out. Right then just to finish it off thought we'd get one of the little neon tubes that uh, uh, basically came off the front of the sax though uh, because only two of them out of the uh, four were actually still working the other ones were smashed um, but yeah so I think uh, for the moment 
I think that's pretty good to be honest. So what have we done? We've done a fair bit of work on the Saxo. Uh, we finally got all of the uh, audio side of things, at least initially, started on the uh, 106, which is pretty cool. So pretty happy with how that's gone. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're back on the road with the 106 as well. So uh, <laughs> MOT'd and sorted out. So um, yeah, just cracking through stuff at the moment. I've uh, got a couple of things on the 106 still to sort out. So we need to do the heater um, sort of blower because that's still not working. Can't get it to work, don't know why, but uh, yeah, uh, I think it's probably something to do with some of the wires that were uh, disconnected because of the Clifford alarm system, so we're gonna have to go through and get that sorted out. And also the power steering, uh, we've got a pump in there, but I think it's seized, so uh, we're gonna have to work out what we wanna do with that. But I mean, we can still drive without power steering, it just means that you get a little bit of a workout on the old arms. Uh, so yeah, so that's it really for this episode and uh, this update. Uh, gonna still be uh, cracking on now with the Saxo. We're gonna be getting TVs and stuff sorted in this 106 along with the PlayStation. Now that we've got the uh, audio side of things, we can now get the visuals uh, underway as well. So uh, yeah, happy days, cracking on. Cheers everyone for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you later.